Right. Uh, we are doing rice paper. Rice yeah. paper. Paper, paper. I think it's all really the same stuff. The one that Jane was saying was so expensive last time is because it's the one that they print on. I don't think it's really that different. It just comes on the backing and goes in the printer and it's a bit thicker. But you could use that paper, just that it's much more expensive. It's like a few, like, I don't know, 50 rand a sheet or something. More expensive. It's 800 rand to 25 sheets. Such a weird texture. Um, so this one is just the, the normal cheapy one. Um, if you wanted to do these effects with something that was printed on it, then you would print it on and do the same effect. Just be careful because we're going to wet it to make it, to shape it. So if you have something printed on it and then you wet it, you might lose the pattern depending on what the pattern is. I'm just you know, putting it out there. I haven't really done that much, so I don't really know. But I, I would imagine that the pattern would actually dissolve and mush. Yes, I think it would. So especially, I mean, if it was something that wasn't just like a watercolor smudgy type of thing, you know what I mean? I'm okay, so high vanilla scented. <laughs> How weird. Certainly, the ones that they print on are vanilla scented. Mine just smells like. Oh, Mine just came from Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> that could be because I have no sense of smell, maybe. Yeah, we, 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 we don't want to say it, but we think Jane has, um, <laughs> has COVID. <laughs> it's a food grade printing. That was the cheapest one on Amazon. There you go. I think they all work the same. I've, I've used whatever. I've used all of the above and nothing. I've never had any problems. So I think it's quite foolproof. Yeah. If it gets very wet, um, it will become mush. So we want to wet it, but we don't want to make it very wet. Okay. And I did, when I was doing the prep for this class, I did see some people, they dip the whole thing in water. We're just going to paint on. You can dip it in water, but I would be very careful. And I've also seen people doing similar things. Do you know what a summer roll is? A rice paper roll. Oh, um, yeah. That Vietnamese. Thai, Vietnamese yeah. little bundle of yeah. salad, basically. Yeah. But so those, that, you, can, you get a round sheet. Yeah. You also get those sheets. I've also used those sheets for this. It's the really same kind. I've never seen them. Um, you get the sheets from the Chinese shop or the Asian shop, which in Claremont there's one opposite the Absa. But um, Asian yeah, it's not the in the supermarket. I've never seen it at the Cape. Okay. Nice, yeah. Occasionally, you see them at Woolworths. Oh yeah, probably. I must go and have a look. Just look, they're like the second comes in a round, and it says yeah. rice paper, something wrappers, something like that. For making crystal spring rolls. That's what it's called. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a spring roll, but it's not fried. Yeah. It's delicious. <laughs> Very good. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, just check that she's not waiting. More weird. I'm so paranoid now. No, oh, there's no one there. Oh, okay. So we're going to paint. You can, I, I put water on the list because I wanted to make it as easy as possible for everyone to have it at home. What is happening behind you now, Candace? <laughs> Oh, so it's right the, the vacuum cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> so the next door neighbor has moved that to America, like yes, the day before I arrived here in New York, and so they're busy cleaning up because she has a show off today. So neighborly okay. <laughs> So you could use also yeah, the please. quick dry, <laughs> which was <would run> <laughs> yeah. or water. I'm just going to use water because water is. You know, really available. Okay, so you can mix a few colors. I've got a whole bunch of these little, give me my rice here, by the way, just some little bowls. I'm gonna mix some colors yeah, in, but just, is that all right? Oh, I've got way too much water then. <laughs> I don't know, okay. just, just mix some. <laughs> <Shut up. laughs> and obviously, it's up to you what colors you want to do. I'm gonna. Keep with colors that can be mixed together that won't make brown. So if you think about the color wheel, you're going to have um, red and yellow will make orange, green and yellow will make, sorry, blue and green, blue and yellow will make green. You know what I mean? Are we doing water colors? You know what I'm talking about? Okay, yeah. so I'm going to do pink and blue. 
and purple. So that if they mix together, we end up with something that's all in one. And that will go with my, my, my cake. Yes, you see, it was all very well planned. Are we using your colours, Julie? Oh, you can use one. I actually don't know if the powdered colours mix with the water. You can use gel colour. I'm using gel. Okay. But actually, just whatever you've got is pretty fine. Don't. Okay. Ah, what colour is that? Okay. Just a second. Spilling water everywhere now. Um, I don't know what's happening here. <laughs> <laughs> you can also use a spray to spray this to whatever color you want it to be so like an airbrush or um um you get these little tins of spray if you wanted to make it shiny you can spray it on uh, okay, that's really dark now. And then my last one, I'm going to do pink. My purple is awful though. So you've got pink, blue, and... Why, well, that was supposed to be the purple, but I don't know what that is. That looks like a dog's breakfast. Mm. I think the dog would be deeply offended. I don't know, the dog's gone off to be sad somewhere else. <laughs> oh, you emo dog. Let me tell you about this dog, Candace. So I was just saying, Jane, I adopted this dog. But he has had a terrible life, obviously. It's hard to know because no, they don't, they were just surrendered. So, but he's very cowery and he's got scars all around his neck and on his yeah. back, his legs from possibly a burn. I don't know. Anyway, they don't, I don't really know what happened to him, but it was bad, whatever it was bad. And, um, but every time we go anywhere, you just like, reprimand him a little bit and then he like cowers and everyone's like oh, and I'm like I, I, it's a rescue I didn't do this <laughs> okay now everything looks the same color okay that I just I don't know let's just 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 paint and see what we get okay just go with it I'm just going with it because sometimes you can't always tell what it's going to be like okay so I'm going to paint this whole piece and then I'm going to shape it into some kind of sail um, sorry, just to go over what we're going to do in the class. I thought I, I'm not sure what I said now. I'm totally off in my own world today. We're going to make the sail first, and you can put that in your ovens to dry if you, I think that's the best way to do that. And, um, and then we're going to do some other things. We're going to do a flower and a, a feather and a few other things. Okay. Just while we're waiting for these sails to dry. Good. What temperature must I set the oven to? Just on a low temperature, like 100 or less. Okay. And just with some fan if you have it, because it makes it go quicker. Right, where's my brush? Okay. Oven set. Sorry, I need to redo my pink. It's terrible. I don't know. I'm just playing right now to see what we get. So I found when I use the brush, if the color is quite dark, like this blue here, you get quite a streaky brush texture. It's quite nice. So it's up to you. Again, I think it's like one of these things, just play around with it a bit and see what you get and what you like. What you could also maybe do if you wanted to, well, let's just do this one first. So my pink, you can see my pink is quite dilute. So you don't get as much of the brush texture. It's sort of more even. With, whereas the blue, this one here, is very strong. You know what I mean? So if you want a dark color, you want to get a nice, you can't do too many layers of color because otherwise it will become very, uh oh, that wasn't what I intended to do. That didn't happen. Excuse me, guys, I've got World War Three going on here. <laughs> it's the cats again. Okay. So, I don't know. Okay, looks like a Charlotte drew this, but you can see it's becoming quite soft. So now I'm going to just put it onto this. Let me just put these on there. I'm going to put it on a tray because that's what I'm going to put it on in the oven. 
and I'm going to try and shape it into some kind of interesting shape. And it will firm up again like the, um, like the, the texture that it had before you wet it. Whoopsie. Um, so it will become hard enough to stand up. Sorry, say that again. Does it matter if you just use the same brush? No, I just use the same brush. Okay, and then, so, it really, I don't know, this is a bit hit and miss for me. Can you see what I'm doing? Kind of gathered it up on one side. I'm going to peg it. You probably don't need to peg it. It probably will stay stuck to itself. I don't like these corners like this. To me, it just looks like it obviously was a page. I want it to be more of a kind of natural shape. I'm going to try yanking it off and see. Actually, I'm going to leave this. So I'm just going to cut that bit away so that it's more natural looking and a little bit less kind of. I took an A4 page and stuck it on my cake. And you can do whatever. You can mash it and mush it and drape it and whatever you want. Okay. I don't know what this is. Okay, there we go. So I'm just gonna put it over there. So much mess. It's so sticky. It's quite sticky. Don't let it get very wet. This is what I'm saying. Just brush it on and get, get with the get. Done. Uh, actually, um, yeah. Let's see. And obviously, where it is not wet, it um, it doesn't bend. So. You might want to go back and just, if you've got edges, just dampen those up a bit. Okay. <clears throat> Another option that you could try. <clears throat> is to take, oh, my word. what's happening? Everything's still okay there? Fighting between it getting too wet and sticking to itself and uh, mine and not being wet enough to bend. Table. Oh, no, it's stuck to my board. Yeah, I'm going full on Picasso here. Um, mine's definitely not Jacob, uh, Jackson Pollock. <laughs> um, and don't get too stressed out about it. It is the kind of thing that is meant to be a bit wild. Once it's stuck to itself, I don't think you'll get it apart again, Candice. I don't know, is it working? Go with it. I mean, really. I'm just going with it. I'm just using it to, to tear the edges so it's a bit more organic. Yes, yes. Organic is good. What we want is organic. That's very Jackson Pollock. I like that. Um, sorry, I'm just <laughs> one last thing. Okay. And then she replied, she said she completely forgot, but now does that mean she's joining us or not? What does that mean? <laughs> she clearly was busy. Fine. I've, I've got little energy for it. It's like, you book, you come, you don't come, whatever. I don't know. Where am I? What am I doing? Um, I've lost you. Are you. Can you see me now? Okay, so I've splashed it around a bit now. I'm actually, I'm going to use my quick dry for this because it's got a nice little squeezy dropper tip, but you could use it, whatever. So where, I don't know if you can see, okay, where there are, I have splashes. I'm going to drop some fresh water or whatever on to try and make it, you know, I don't know if you can see what it is doing here. Yes, that looks amazing. That's what I want. So it's like, Great. you really can do anything. Okay. So I quite like the, the um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like the watercolor look. And I think it's quite popular, but you can do anything. You can do anything. 
Maybe I need more pink on this. Hey. Mace, but quite happy with it. Well, that's definitely not going to go anywhere anytime soon. I'm going to take the lesson and do the next one on the baking tray. On the yes. so oh, what you can also do if you really fancy is take your, your silicon mat or whatever. So this is just some paper. And you can make it on the paper if you want. And then wrinkle up the paper, the paper underneath. So this one, I actually pegged the, the rice paper. This one's not wet enough to bend yet. And then you get the rice paper sticking to the rice paper. Yes. yes, once it's stuck itself, there's no going back from that. So this is a clean sheet sticking to the other sheet. It looks oh. like a different rag. Okay, so what you could do, is, so I've now got a piece of rice paper. Let me just get a bit further away. I've got a piece of rice paper on a piece of baking paper. What you could do is bend the baking paper and peg that. That's also an option. I'm not sure it really makes any difference. Once it's dry, the pigs come off easily. It's not like you need um, to have it, you know, on paper. I don't know. So I'm making them kind of concertina, like folded like this. Uh, but you could also just... like fully crumple it. You can make it go <laughs> organic. Organic is the word. So this one I've made like a puff out of it now. I don't know if you can see it. Sorry. It looks like paper. <laughs> I'm pull it over there. Okay, so just make a couple that you can put in the oven to dry and then we'll make some other stuff and you can come back and see how these have worked out. I think once you've made a few, it's a bit easier to see what you envision. want to envision. Yeah, exactly. Um, I found that when I did the first few, I made a few and then I broke them up and stuck them on and, you know, um, to, make, to build it onto the cake. Uh, I'm having so much fun right now. Okay, I'm gonna go and just quickly stick it in my oven. I just have to go out of the room for that, so I'll be back in a second. Cool. Okay, and then we'll start making some flowers and stuff. Okay, so I'm just doing two sheets because mine are not terribly sexy. Right, sorry about that. So, sorry, just to recap about the oven, low temperature, you don't want it to go brown, you want it to just dry out. Um, if it was not humid, I would say even just the fan would probably be enough, or you can stick it in a, underneath it like a fan. Uh, if you've used the quick dry, it will probably dry quicker. I don't know, I put mine in at 100 and it only took about five minutes to dry. So just don't let them get like cooked, I think. But on a hundred, it shouldn't brown them. Sorry? If you turn your oven off, wouldn't that work? Yes, as you use your oven warm. You just want to dry it out. And I guess eventually it would just dry out by itself. Um, I just don't know how long that would take. I haven't done that. Well, that's a dreadful noise. Um, okay, so. The sails are all the rage, they're all the thing, but I actually much prefer making flowers and stuff with this way for paper. I love the way it looks. I 
I'm all for all about wafer paper flowers. <laughs> and I think they something different. I don't know. I was saying to Jane earlier, I'm so over fondant. So over it. Well, I haven't made um I haven't made rice rice paper anything, so this is a completely new Yeah, it's also the first time I'm working with rice paper. So, I don't know if any of you have one of these. You, oh, that looks awesome. I like the colors. Let's see what they do. See what they do. Okay, so this. And pink. What? Oh, that's rather cute. These are belonging to Charlotte and they're meant for scrapbooking. They're a bit small for this, but they will do the trick. I went to um, Mary Pack and they had a variety of them, but they were so expensive. I was like, I'm not buying this just for one class. We'll make do with what we've got. Okay, so they are little stamps. I don't know if you can see. Uh, I'm sure you know what they are. It's like a little punch. So you put the paper in and it just punches out a little flower. Yeah. And they're quite small, but I mean, they're quite cute. Oh, actually. a little snake one, but I don't have it with me. <laughs> It's, it's very much the kind of thing that I didn't want anyone to buy, especially for the class, because it's, they're quite expensive and, okay. So that is just an option if you want to make smallish flowers. And to be honest, the paper with, with it cut out is also quite attractive. I don't know if you can see a lot of reflection here. What is this reflection from? Your um, this if one is the same. Colorful flowers, would you paint the paper first? You would paint or dust the paper first or after. I'm going to show you now. Okay, so there's my little flowers. Okay, so if you dust, let's just dust them first so you can see what I'm about. So you could just dust them with a little bit of colored dust. All right. I don't know if you can really even see the color on there. Little baby fondant flowers. Sorry? Like you would do a fondant flower. Exactly like you do a fondant flower. Okay. Or you can take, oh, where do I put that little brush? Or you can take your paint. I've got a tiny, tiny brush because these flowers are so flippin' tiny. And you can just paint them. Yeah. Oh, that's clever. And when you wet them, they tend to start to become a little bit shaped. So, yeah. this guy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's happening here. Okay. I don't know if you can even see them, they're so tiny. Let me actually, I can go first. So, oh, so Okay. So those are options for just cutting out. Obviously, you can cut out with a pair of scissors, but if you need hundreds, I wouldn't, I would use, get a cutter of some variety. And what I was actually hoping to find at the um, Mary Pack was a petal shape, because that would be great. To be able to cut out, like, just punch out, like, 200 petals would be awesome, but they didn't have anything like that. So anyway, these are scrapbooking punches, and they are quite useful. They are expensive though, so just, um, you know, it's the kind what of thing I would expensive? What is expensive? So the big ones are like 300 rand. Wow. So for something that you're not going to use that much, I wouldn't buy it. This little set, I think Charlotte got it as a gift, and they were probably back 100, was a little set of four. It's about the size. The little ones are cheap, the, the big ones are expensive. Yeah. Um, they probably maybe even cheaper places than Mary Pack. I don't know. That's just where I was and I was looking because I know they had them. Okay, what is happening here? All right. So you can make little flowers to do things. I think if I push this into a petal pad now, it would also become shaped. You can actually see. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's wet in the middle, it's starting to get that shape. Okay. Okay, so let's just get those little guys out of the way. Right. The next one I'm going to make is a feather. Feather. Um, so again, you could paint it or you can dust it. It's up to you. 
I'm going to make this feather on a wire. So there's my wire. Okay. Yeah. So for this, you need two kind of strips of paper. I just discovered that my wires are actually pre-covered. We're ready for pre-covered wires, okay. and the world needs more of that. So, yeah. your own wire. so two two rectangles. Two rectangles. They don't have to be anything fancy. And then we're going to glue them together with the wire sandwich between them. No, I think the thinner you've got, the better, but don't, it doesn't really matter. So I've got 30 gauge. Yes, that's perfect. That's very thin. Blue. 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 Okay, so there is some glue. I'm using the Barco food glue, but any glue, actually even water, it doesn't really matter. Um, the water seems to make it, as you said, quite sticky. The glue seems a little bit less sticky. We're just gonna um, stick it a little. Sorry? Did we just stick it in the middle? Okay, so I'm gonna paint down the middle. You wanna actually paint the whole thing because you want you don't want any unstuck bits. Your wire in there, and then your other one on top. So you've got a little wire sandwich. I think a white covered wire would be better for this. I don't have any white ones. I've used them all up and I haven't been back to the thing because you don't really want to see that green middle. But I think, you know, for the purposes of this, it's really such a big deal. Okay. And then I'm going to cut out just a kind of basic feather shape. I shouldn't paint this first. No, let's just make the shape first. I saw a fabulous last night somewhere online, a fabulous cake with wafer paper feathers of a peacock, and they were so pretty. So oh, nice. Let's see if I can find that picture. Okay. So it's kind of feather shaped. It's, don't ever uh, think it's. Yeah, Jane. Oof. And have to learn to put it down one time. <laughs> Not try and lift it again. No, I think it's a one time deal. Definitely a one time deal, but never mind. We will. Um... And for this, you don't want to put a lot of glue. You don't want to make it wet like that other one thing that we were doing. This, you want it to dry quickly so that it's not sticky yeah. and. It's actually really easy. It's really easy. I love this stuff. It's it's like I've been looking forward to this class, these classes all week because they're so they're the best and that's easy ones. <laughs> okay. Mine's looking a little odd, but anyway. No, that's fine, that's fine. Trust me, it doesn't matter. Okay, now you're gonna go with your scissors and you're gonna snip, snip, snip. So my, I think you guys both have your wire to the end, which is actually better. My wire is only to the end. But if you imagine the central vein, you're going to snip on either side of it. So angled like this, snip, 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 snip. Okay. Sorry. How much wire do you think we need at the end? Whatever you think you need, you're going to stick on your cake. Okay. Yeah. Just just I'm, I'm kind of going to use one wire for two feathers. Yes, of course. That's fine. Obviously, it depends how big your feather is. My feather seems to be quite large. I should have made a smaller one. I'm only snipping forever. <laughs> I 
if you do put too much glue on, just leave it to dry a bit. Just set it aside, make another one, and come back to it. Once they dry, it's much easier to deal with. You can imagine this would make quite nice leaves as well. Yes. This is a lost his leaf, his feather. Doesn't look too good. Okay, so there. Unhappy seagull. Let's try again. Looks like uh, a ostrich feather or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a bit see through. Yeah. Like <laughs> oh, that's great. It'll dry. It'll dry. Okay, and then I'm going to snip and snip my other side. Okay. It looks and it smells fine. And actually, you know, it might sell quicker. I mean, it's well. because if you look at them differently, you can see that sleep of everything. Um, and, you know, that front window is so bad. So much snipping. So, so much snipping. snipping. Oh, oh. Look, I just pulled it off. <gasps> okay, that was a bit, a bit of a disaster. Right. So, once you've done all your snipping, try not to yank any pieces off like I just did. You can also bend your wire a bit if you want to make it look a little bit more exciting. I don't know, and feathers aren't really bent like that. They're more straight, but... And then you can just set it aside to dry. It ripped it right off there. Yeah. Um, if you wanted to put color on it, I think it would have been... Probably the optimal would be to paint it, dry it, and then snip it. I'm going to attempt to get some paint on it now. Really stop that. Oh, chicken moan. Slipping spike therapeutic. <laughs> So there, I painted it a bit, it's sort of quite watercolorish. I'm going to just put it aside to dry. It is quite wet now, so I don't want to break it while I'm trapping around with it. I'm just going to put it... There it is over there with my tiny baby ones. And I suggest you keep your area where you're working dry because it's something more irritating than then having a big blob coming from underneath that you didn't intend. I like the... Messing about. Oh, that's beautiful. Yours is beautiful. <laughs> As you're going now, you're better. Messing it up a bit makes it look a bit more realistic. More realistic, absolutely. And it's the same with the flowers. You'll see now. Hey, how's that? Beautiful. I don't know. Hold it still. Love it. Love it. So cool. I love yours. Yeah, yours is perfect, Candice. It's so it's like, let's say you were doing a hat or something, then you would just stick the feather on. Done. And it's so quick. It's so much quicker than making anything comparable, comparable in appearance to fondant or sugar paste or gum paste or whatever. I'm going to try one with the watercolor just to see what happens. See what happens. Oh, and I've got this really uncomfortable chair. Today, I should have gotten my more comfortable chair. Oh, I'm cushion. Okay. 
So this is just, just go back this open. This is just a piece of white. I'm just gonna dust it with some colored dust to see what we get. And now I'm gonna get a bit of a background color, but not wet. What should I use? Purple blue day. Okay, so this guy will dry and then I'll snip it, right? Yes, I think it's gonna be, I think that's the best option. Yeah. You can even put it in the oven if you wanna dry it out quicker. True. But that's up to you, you don't have to do that right now. I'm just to check on my, my sales. Yeah. Yeah. Have a look. Anyway. Cause my oven's so far away, <laughs> I don't wanna go check until I'm sure they dry. That's I think my children are home. Yay, they dry. Are they dry? Bring it here, let's see. How cool they are. How cool is that? Oh, look at that. Are you dry, Jen? <laughs> is your oven easily accessible? <gasps> they look awesome. They are awesome. What a, I mean, again, what a fun, quick way to decorate a cake. It's so quick. And the other, other side also looks pretty cool. Yes, I think the color kind of seeps through. I don't think yeah. you have really a front and a back anymore. It might do. They don't look so great, but there they are. They look awesome from here. I don't know. Oh. They're a bit out of... It's my wash rag. <laughs> and that's the normal one. Those look cool. Oh, it's going to look a bit Okay, so I've just dusted this with some purple dust. I don't know. It looks, it looks very smudgy in the screen something like a dry brush technique might work yes so yeah. i just added it with this this guy here yeah so it's still got a little bit of wetness to it but it's almost dry yeah yeah okay anyway i'm going to use this to make some flowers are we ready for a flower yes okay so i'm going to first one i'm going to make uh, Jane and I were vaguely talking about it earlier. Is this one at the bottom? Okay, so I printed, I made a, a template for you guys because people don't like it when there's no template. But I don't normally use a template. I normally just cut out a, a nice spiral, which I'm going to do. It's right over here. I'm just Okay, so there's my spiral. Can you see it? Yeah. So that's all I've done so far. I'm just going to round out these edges here because obviously it was on a square sheet. And I've made lots of flowers just like this. If you want it to be more realistic, then we're going to cut in that petal shape. If you look on that template, you'll see it's kind of jaggedy. Okay. But before I do it, let me just show you how it's going to be. Okay. So there's my spiral. Okay. Yeah. And you're going to work from the middle. Outwards like that. Actually, am I working from the middle or am I working from the outside? What am I doing? I don't think it matters where you start. Okay. So that you get it to cup upwards. Can you see how it's doing that? Okay. Yeah. And it doesn't look like much right now. I just, once I put the glue on, it's going to be all sticky and stuck. And then I'm going to have to carry on with it. Okay. So if you want to put some sort of pickle shapes in the, in the outside here, just look at that template to get some ideas. I don't know. You could just make it curvy. You can... 
You froze them, Julie. So there is my starter, but can you even see it? Yeah. It looks it's pretty cool. But don't overthink it. Just make random snips. It's really not that big a deal. Um, and as I say, you might want to put this into something, onto something. You can either make this onto a wire or you can make it with a piece of fondant or something in the middle. Just something for the inside, the middle of it. I think I'm going to create it and then decide what I want to use. I don't know, there we go, plan here. Yeah. They're not me. They, they are occupying the wooden cardboard box this size. Oh, okay. Okay, so for this, okay, everyone ready? Right. Just wait. If you sit and done to cut the spiral, of course. <laughs> and if you're looking for a useful way for paper flowers, go online and look for um, crepe paper flowers. There's lots of different ideas and things, and you can make them all out of wafer paper. There's um, much difference between them. I, I think what you're doing. <laughs> Whatever. Probably the photographer standing in this corner. Yes. Okay, so I'm getting a bit of glue. Should I wait for you guys? I feel like you're all looking at your cutting. Trying to catch up. Okay, yeah. let me write the page. I don't want to rush you. I'm going to stand up and stretch my legs a bit. This is that? I don't know. <laughs> uh, okay, I, I don't want to rush you. Don't just take your time. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. Voice of panic. And my um, Charlotte has been going to the OT, and she'd be saying, "What good fine motor skills?" <laughs> <laughs> We're all about the fine motor. It's at this point in your life that you realize that maybe your parents were right and you were wrong. <laughs> the box is on the table. Um, it's fine, bro. Nothing definitive. Okay. Actually, while you guys are cutting, I'm going to go look for myself. I'll be back. Okay. okay. There we go. Show me if the 
Okay, I'm going to start. It's mine. Great. I love it. <laughs> okay, so you're going to glue. Let me just show you before I actually put the glue on. You're going to glue from the middle outwards on the edge that is the straight edge, not the wobbly edge. Okay. Make sense? Yep. Okay. Yes. And use this glue very sparingly. You don't want so much glue that it all becomes a big sticky mess. It's the kind of thing you can always add more, but I think we've established that once it's wet and sticky, it's much more challenging to work with it. I think that's pretty great. And then if you wanted to do it on a wire or a toothpick or something, I don't know if I should do this because I'm going to undo it. Put your toothpick in the middle there. Kind of like we did the, and just fold it over to sandwich it with some part of the, you see that? And then from there, just start wrapping it around. I don't actually want it on a wire, so just going to go from there. Okay. This is and a you little just, bit of fondant. It. You can make little folds in it. So can you see there? Make a little bend to give it more, even more realisticness, realism. <laughs> I now have not put enough glue on it, of course. <laughs> It's very hard to get the middle perfect, so that's how we're going to put a little ball of fondant or something there just to cover that up. Do I put any glue on this thing? Jesus. Maybe the quick drying glue is dried a bit too quickly. I don't know what's happening here. Maybe put it in the wrong place. And again, water would be fine. I think it would stick just fine with water. It just is much harder to control the amount of water. So can you see how the flower is starting to form? Yeah. This is super tricky. Is it? Yeah, my spiral keeps coming apart. And just to show you at the back, so I'm not going straight into the middle. I'm going out, out, out to get that, oopsie, to get that effect. But if you wanted a more tightly closed thing, more like a rose, I would go closer to the end.
I'm accidentally watercoloring my petals. I feel like that's part of the appeal, is that it's, it becomes eventually watercolored. I don't know, for me that's kind of cool. I like that. I've made mine is not great. Okay. Not great. What does that mean? <laughs> now, I only want to hear greatness. I don't want to hear it's not great. What is that? <laughs> I just want to hear that it's awesome. Please, please just say it's awesome. <laughs> For the fact that I've never done this before, it's fabulous. Yes, <laughs> And obviously, if you've made it as big as you want it, then you can just break with any extra. Nice big one. So I'm keeping going. And I quite like the idea of having like one big flower on a thing and then just done, you know. <laughs> like a lot of times, especially with lots and lots of small flowers, it's so time consuming to make them. Weird. You can get quite nice effects with just one big ass flower. Okay, now, so maybe one needs a lot of work, but it, there it is. It's kind of cool. I like it. it. I think it's lovely. <laughs> but we want to practice, but I guess we got it. Okay, there's my flower. So, That's that beautiful. From the side. Okay, yeah, so the folds, the folds are what, can you see? There, you need those folds are what make it fluff up. Oh, I need to make folds. Jen, are you praying now? No, no, I'm sitting down, just holding. <laughs> You're sitting down with your hands like this, like, oh my God. No, no, it's so that I can, so that I don't fucking get out. Yes, as well. Yes, as well. Okay. My middle, I don't know if you can see the middle, the middle leaving something to be desired, um, partially because I squashed it over that wire and then took the wire up. Um, so I would just put a little ball of fondant or something in the middle. You could cut out a circle, I don't know, whatever. Whatever, just something in the middle there to cover that up. Just a little piece of purple fondant. I'm just going to stick that in the middle. But you could use... Um, Hundreds and thousands, you know. They like a little one and calyx front. <laughs> oh, it's so cute. I love it. You know me, I always make everything miniature. I love it. There's no exception. Okay. So there's the middle. It's just a little ball of purple purple fondant. I'm going to stick it in there. Just to create a... She do not know what that part of the flower is called. But you could put... Um, you can put stamens, you can put anything. Just, just something in the middle there. Yeah. Finish it off. Okay. okay. I needed to put my what was wrong. Okay. Sorry? I need Yeah. To so the pleating is what makes it stand up more. Yeah. If you just um just put that guy there, let me just make a quick another one quickly. Yeah, uh, if you don't pleat it. You can also make a lovely flower. It just comes out a bit differently. And again, you can make them as big or as small as you want. So let me just make another little one quickly while you guys are watching. Um, this sucks seriously high speed. Okay. And there's just a speedy Gonzalez, um Get rid of those corners. Spiral. And I actually don't know. You could just do this from long strips. I'm wondering why I always do a spiral. Like I don't really know what I've done wrong. Okay. Watching you do that, I know exactly what I've done wrong. Um, so if you wanted to do, I, I have, a, let me just see what happens if I go from the outside. I just want to try something, sorry. I'm now experimenting. So 
So you could just go around and round and round. That looks fabulous. From the outside. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's sticking on the wire. I can just do my hand. Okay, so this one doesn't really have any pleats in it. I'm just going round and round. It also didn't have any like petal shape. It was just a long strip, basically. Yeah. And if you if you can see that, it looks a bit odd. It's because I'm rushing through it. Yeah. But that's just another idea. Okay. But anyway, so once you've got this guy like this, if you wet it, it will become more pleaty. So. But do this with caution. Caution. <laughs> so you can paint onto it a little bit if you want. You know, to make it more and to highlight it a bit. But it's up to you, just play around with it. It depends on what kind of flower you've made. And you can still dust these in the same way you would dust a normal flower, just brush on dust after. They don't harden much more than this. So it's not like working with um, gum paste where it becomes very hard. So when you dust onto it, obviously they are still moving around, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. What's our next thing we're supposed to be doing? I've lost the plot here. Oh, the petals. Okay. So then the last picture on there, the other picture on there, is this petal template and this is why I was looking for um, the punch because the idea of cutting out hundreds of those did not appeal to me I do not drop the paper so I came up with this plan let me show you my plan Okay, so I've got a strip. It's quite it's, it's wide enough to fit that petal in the shape, hopefully. Okay. So there's the petal. Um, this is an edible pen. Um, I think it's run out of ink, though. Look how cute it is. It's beautiful! It's a little leaf. Okay, so I'm just going to trace over with my edible pen. Oh, there we go. I've got some color. Okay, just so that I've got the shape. Okay. Erin, still on the on the vague road with me here. And You're then I'm going to fold this. like a concertina okay so I've got a few layers I've got five layers and then I'm just going to cut around all of them in one go in the hopes of making a lot in a short period of time I don't have a so this is not obviously for eating purposes, so we'll just use the normal pen that we've got. You could just paint it on or, I don't know, I might not even use this top one because I don't really want this colour on my petals that I used. So I might just dispose of that one and just use these guys. And I've also just cut out circles. I've just cut out freehand, long, like lily-shaped petals. Any petals are fine. It doesn't really matter. You can make, make them do whatever you want. Okay. Right, so there are my petals. This guy got a bit cut off and this guy got the weird color on it. But okay, let's go. Let's go with it. Right, what color am I going to make this guy? So would you cut the petals out first and then color them? 
again, let me show you what I'm doing. Let me show you what I'm doing. You can see. So I'm going to color this guy down the middle of these petals instead of the glue. Okay. Because I'm going to, I'm just going to do it all in one go. So the color is wetting it. And I'm going to stick them together. Okay. I think it's up to you, whatever you want to do. Because if you colored them first, you could still wet it with glue, you know, or with water or whatever. Okay, and then you'll see as you wet it, it starts to shape it a bit. So hopefully, I don't know if you can really even see this, hopefully it will start to cup upwards. It's, it's not very... Um, you can also paint on the edges to make the edges a little bit more um, uh, bendy, wavy. And I'm just using the colors that I've got. But you could just, if you wanted to be white, you'd just do this with water or quick dry. You wouldn't bother with the colors. Yeah, that's going to clash with this one. I should have done them all in the red. And in general, when it comes to flowers, you want multiples of three or five. Yeah. So don't, I, there's not very many flowers that have four. Four, or I think the only one that I know of is a poppy. And the fours tend to give you this kind of like, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, symmetrical look that is a bit like unpleasing to the human eye. Okay, that guy looks great. Now, how do I get the other ones to look like that guy? I don't know, if you look at your paper, I don't know if it's just my paper or if it's your paper as well. If you look at the actual paper, one side is quite smooth and one side is kind of textured. Yeah. So let me just show you, just see these guys. If I paint on the texture side, that's what happens. Yeah. Okay. If yeah. I paint on the smooth side, it's not as bobbly. Bobbly. Yes. So use that when you when you so this one I really like the way it looks, and then I realize it's because I painted it on the texture side. So I'm just going to go back and flip them over so they're quite all the same. I think it's because I did the concertina. Now some are textured and some are not on the way I painted them. Here we go. That looks nice. Okay. Can't tell which side is which now. There we go. Okay. You really don't need to be. <laughs> Your catch is very cute. Got to be involved, always. I love um, calico cats, they're the best. She's a rescue. Well, it wasn't <laughs> a rescue. I just adopted her when she was very, very small. So my vet says that um, cats with ginger have the devil in them. What? Yeah. <laughs> and I think that's all magic. I've had a few calico cats and they've all got had the devil in them. <laughs> in a good way. But still. She's got the most beautiful personality, but she wants attention. <laughs> and that's the problem. With my, my boy, we'll just come and lie all over the computer. Yes, my ginger cat likes to sleep on my mouse pad, which is fine when I'm not using the computer. But he doesn't really move when I am using the computer. No. So what do you do with the petals once you painted them? Do you just leave them to okay. dry? We're going to attach them to each other or to a wire. Let me show you what each other means. Okay, so I've painted down the middle there with the pink. So it's soft enough to make a little pleat. Mm -hmm. And that really makes it cup then. And then just with a bit of glue or water, whatever we're using, my glue brush nice purple on it. Just, it, oh, 
but you might want to leave them to dry if they're giving you problems because when they're sticky it's just so hard to work with them so the next one in whoopsie oh, no, no. I find mine wants to bend the way I don't want them to bend. They're just doing them over. They're just doing their own thing. Which I think is kind of the appeal. I don't know. For me, that's that's what I like about things. Here's the glue. It's a control freak in me that doesn't like it. Okay. Yeah. So I cut out five. Um, so when you're spacing something in fives, I like to think of the Vitruvian man, if you know who he is, a man with his arms in the air and his legs outstretched. Yeah, yeah. This, like that. Um, because otherwise it's difficult to get that spacing always. And again, you can decide what you want to put in the middle of this. If you wanted to put, um, oh, um, some fondant, or if you wanted it on a wire, it's really whatever you prefer. I feel like wiring them kind of defeats the purpose a little bit. You know, they're so yeah. kind of fresh and. So there's my flower. And it's quite cupped. It's almost like a um, water lily or something. So you can open it out a bit or leave it up. I'm going to leave it up because I think it's stuck that way now. And you want a spiral. So when you get to the last petal, one side is above and then it needs to go under the very first petal you did. That's right. I have to wait for mine. So the middle of this one isn't actually too bad. I don't know if you can see it there. It's a bit of crumply paper, but not too, not too hideous. I'm just going to take a little bit of yellow dust and dot it in there just to make it look like some pollen or something. Um, if I can find a clean brush, which is looking very hopeful here. Push it. making flowers and I make quite nice flowers. Okay. That's looking good, Jane. Oh, that's lovely. It's like a frangipani almost. Yeah. Not by choice. Okay. I'm gonna leave it there just to uh, but once they yeah once you've made them she needs to dry. I just want to try one last thing. I think we're probably almost out of time here. Yeah, I should shut up here. Huh? I just want to do one more quick thing to see what happens. Okay, so it's just a strip. Just cut a whole bunch of snips in it. Making a. Oh, you know what I'm making here. I need yeah. to stop talking. Get to the point. Pom pom flower. Pom pom flower, something like that. I don't really know. Let's see when it all comes out.
I think my snips are too square. Uh oh. If you wavy the, the, the end and then clip them, it would be nice. Yes, I think that would have been better because this looks a bit random. Um, So I've made even more snips in there. And now I'm going to, I don't know what this, well, I don't actually know what's going to happen. I'm going to dip it in some color and see what happens. Oh, that's a cool. It's going to curl. Boom. It's going to curl and it's going to be awesome. Yeah, it's going to curl. Okay. Could have been a bit rounder. There you go. It actually looks quite cool. Um, it doesn't look so cool on the screen, but it actually looks quite cool in person. It looks really cool. I'll I take like some. It. Really nice. So, I guess yeah. what I'm trying to get at is that it's quite a versatile thing. You can make all kinds of things with it. Wetting is what makes it cool and stick. So bear those things in mind. And using coloured liquid or dry powder, obviously, to get the colours that you want. There was a girl who, what's her name, Monica, from the Australian Great Bake Off. She has a whole series on these, these cake flick things, and she had geometric flowers where she literally just took them out of the rice paper. Yes. Mm. And she painted them and stuck them straight onto the cake. Yes, absolutely. And they, they, were, quite, they were quite spectacular. The thing, I, I love this this medium because I feel that you can make really spectacular things and they're not hard to do. No, no, it just takes patience. Patience. And it takes, um, it takes the feeling that you, you, you're not really happy. You know, my various things that were in the oven. Now with this, can you cut this? Yes, okay, so let's just talk about what you do with this now. Okay, so now you've got it and you want to attach it onto your cake. Okay. Oh, my sugar sheet is still not stuck. Uh, I just want to change the angle here a bit. It's still trying to dry. So let's assume you're going to now stick it onto the cake somewhere. Yeah. So if you want it to be standing upright like this, this is just polystyrene, I can't push it in. If it was butter icing, I'd just basically smush it into the icing. If it was fondant, you need to sort of mold it onto the fondant a bit. So with a bit of glue. Can you not cut a, a tiny little slice in the, the fondant? You, yes, absolutely. Just whatever you do, you want it to be neatish and or maybe just covered up with flour. But I would put some glue onto it. And then, because it's quite brittle now. Oh, that is really brittle. Just maybe just dip this in some glue. And then to make sure that it stands up nicely, um, I just used a what do you call that thing, a veining tool. Oh, I'm just using now the back of a paintbrush just to push it into the fondant. I don't have fondant. And I used a toothpick or a wire or something behind it just to set it. Just to support it while it was drying. Let me just turn around so you can see what I've done. There. So cool. So there's the toothpick. And then I just waited for it to dry and then I took the toothpick out and it stayed up after that, no problem. Uh, and I did the same on the sides. So just by sort of smushing it onto the side and then waiting for it to dry and then... Okay. okay. 
Oh. This is not going to dry on here because it's just polystyrene. There's nothing for it to stick to, but um, that's the idea. If you wanted to, you could do something on a wire, like we've done the, the feather. The feather yeah. so, and then you would just stick it in. Just, oopsie, just like, just okay. like that. Okay, that's one off. Um, can you actually cut a shape out of it? So, say for example, I want to make an oval, like a feather shape. Can I do that? Yes, for sure. Let me just cut one and see. I'm going to get these tiny scissors. My, this one is very brittle. Um, I think I maybe left it in the oven a bit too long. I mean, it's cutting, but if you can hear it's like crunching away there. Okay, it does do it. Okay. Very therapeutic. So they have cut it into a sort of a point or, yeah. yeah. And we said crumply one. This one was like a weird up, crumpled up paper. <laughs> so I'm not really sure what you would do with that. I'm not really that into it, but, um, and I think having flowers and things is useful. So let's say you attach it onto your cake. Into the screen. And then where you've attached it is maybe not so beautiful then you would put your flower just to cover that up. Yeah. If you know what I mean. Yep. Um, the flowers, if you just have an unwired flower, you can just uh, stick it on with some glue. I think that's more than adequate to hold it on. Um, or a little piece of fondant, maybe, if you really oh. need it. Oh, that's, that's beautiful. beautiful. And you can keep okay. adding more and more and more petals, like hamsters and she's done layers now. Does anyone have any questions? No, you've taken out the mystery of this for me. Now I just need to practice and play. Practice makes perfect. Yeah. Yeah. And all these little pieces. So again, I'm just, I don't actually know what's going to happen now. <laughs> I mean, I can guess, but I don't really know. If you had little pieces that you've cut off, obviously you can just use them or you could try wetting them again. And remolding them into something else if you wanted. Just color on me. So maybe if you come to put it on your cake and it's not exactly the shape you want, just try to dampen it again and reshape it a little bit. You can see I can play around with it. Okay. I've also seen some very nice cakes where they just had sort of what you were describing, but small round petals where they just stuck them on the cake, but they had painted them and they were just so, I'll see if I can find the picture, it's so beautiful. Yeah. Like a ranunculus. Well, I just, there was one picture that just made me like, ooh and ah. Oh. I'll see if I can find it. I'm not actually sure it was done with, with rice paper, but it's just pretty. And I think it would work with rice paper. Cool. Nice little pieces that you can just randomly stick on the cake. Exactly. Yeah. And especially, so like this piece was just a piece I cut off now. It's still got all that lovely color. Yeah. Yeah. It could just be like a sculptural. I don't know. I have to go and see a school. So I have to say bye. Thank you so much. <laughs> Are we good? What time? There you yes, go. I, have to go. I have to see a school at one. Can you believe it? Oh my word. In the I way. need to find for my children to go that is not um, my house. <laughs> Get rid of them. Um, and they can only show people around on a Saturday because they can't have strangers coming on a normal day when they COVID, whatever protocols, the whole story. So, not yeah. over it. No. So, but I am more than happy to answer any questions that you might have. I will send the link to the videos and I will find those pictures. I can't remember. I'm sure. Oh, and the recipe for the sugar sheet. I've written that down. Um, I'll send it all probably tomorrow morning, but if you need it sooner, just let me know. Yeah.